What's going on, the Catch Fam? It is Steven here, and in today's video, we are going to be going over the must-start defenses for your fantasy football teams going into Week 13. And it, we encourage you to hit that subscribe button and join the best community in all of fantasy football if you are not already a part of the Catch Fam, guys. And if you like this video or any of the other videos we put out there, always appreciate it if you hit that like button. It means a ton to the channel. But most importantly, make sure to go ahead and get in those comments and let us know who is on your teams. Let us know who you're thinking about starting, benching, or picking up on your waivers ahead of the Sunday's matchup. And guys, in regards to the defense, I really, really encourage you to hit the comments this week because I'm going to be naming some streaming options. And these streaming options are not some of the better ones that I've seen this th thus far throughout the season. So for defenses that you're currently holding or you want to talk it out, I really encourage you to hit those comments so we can talk it out ahead of Sunday's matchups, guys. But with all that said, let's get into the must starts. Up at number one, we got the Baltimore Ravens defense, number four in the league right now. Just a little bit over 50% rostered, kind of surprising, going up against the worst team, I believe, to be in the NFL right now, the Denver Broncos. Guys, Russell Wilson cannot get anything done. They just got blown out by the Carolina Panthers, who are literally tanking, guys. This is pathetic. The Denver Broncos' entire organization is a hot garbage fire. I, it, I I root for the Denver Broncos, and it is really hard to watch them on a weekly basis. Their offense can't get anything done. Their their Russell Wilson just can't seem to make simple throws. Their running game is lethargic. I mean, Latavius Murray had a decent game, but it's it just downright putrid. It's not a fun offense to watch. They do not make anything happen. And now they're going up against this Baltimore Ravens defense, which is very good at A, getting to the quarterback. They had four sacks in three straight weeks, and they've had some monster days getting after the quarterback. But they also create a lot of turnovers with guys like Marcus Peters back there in the secondary. This secondary has some very elite talent type of players, guys. I think they are going to give the Denver Broncos a lot of problems. I see a double-digit lock kind of performance for this Ravens defense, guys. I mean, you know, I mentioned them in the past. I think they're a great rest of season defense. They've got beautiful matchups on the season going throughout. But this Denver Broncos matchup is not an exception. This is going to be a very good play for the Ravens here. Go ahead and let the birds into your lineup. Oh, next, we're going to warmer climates. We're going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, guys. Number 12 on the season. Just coming off of a very, very disappointing week against that loss against the Cleveland Browns, guys. Uh, defense was not the problem there. It was all offense. They had four sacks and interception. Um, and they really did kind of do their job holding the Cleveland Browns to fewer points. But Tampa Bay and that Tom Brady-led offense could not get the job done, surprisingly. The run game, uh, it just felt like they never really gave the full confidence of Rashard White. Uh, Byron Leftwich coached a very bad game for the Tampa Buccaneers. Um, and ultimately, that was an L, right? But going, going looking forward now, they're going up against the Saints, right? The Saints are a really, really bad team. They just gave up a good defensive performance to the San Francisco 49ers, who, in my mind, are a better defense than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, I'll give you that credit there. But I still think this is a really good chance, a really good opportunity to stream against a bad team, a struggling Andy Dalton. Uh, a struggling offense, a struggling team in the New Orleans Saints. And go ahead and plug in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here, guy. This is going to be a one-week stream, though, because the week after that, they have the San Francisco 49ers and the Cincinnati Bengals. And I just don't really want any part of that here. Uh, this Buccaneers team is over 50% rostered, so it could be a little bit harder to get. But I think this is a good start here against the New Orleans Saints. Up next, we got the DMV Classic, the DMV favorite. The Washington Commanders here going against the New York Giants. I really like this Commanders team and how they match up against the Giants. And also, they are going in two different directions. Giants started off really hot this season, and now they are just really on a downfall, guys. They cannot really seem to get their footing. They are just not hot on offense anymore. They've lost too many weapons at the receiver position. And teams are kind of calling their bluff. They know what they're going to do game plan wise. They're going to do their bootlegs to Daniel Jones. They're going to run the ball to Saquon Barkley. And teams are kind of figuring out, okay, we can just game plan them out. We can get this done. And the Giants defense is now having some secondary issues now too. So it's just not a great situation in New York. Now let's reverse the picture. The Washington Commanders are actually starting to look good now, guys. They are on a really good win streak. They are really getting an identity. They are looking like a really good, solid football team. Taylor Heineke's got these guys playing hard. This defense is looking incredible, guys. They are really good at smashing up the ground game and stopping the run lanes. That is exactly what the Giants are going to try to do. And then in the secondary, these guys just create turnovers. 
and they do it in opportune times. Guys, they had a, the game-winning interception in the red zone last week against the Falcons. I really like the commanders here against the Giants. They've got the bye week, guys, but, you know, if they do put out another good performance, uh, which I do think they're going to, you really do have to hold them through the bye week because then they get the Giants again. They've got a tough matchup against San Francisco, but then they've got Cleveland guys for your championships and fantasy football. So this is a defense that I would encourage you to hold, guys, and I would encourage you to start this week. Weeks like this with the streaming options available call for defenses like the New Orleans Saints, a defense that's just not going to kill you, but going to put an average performance together, guys. But I think they do have some upside this week, right? The offense is really struggling. So if the offense can kind of get their wits about them and just not totally go haywire and just mess it up, I think the Saints defense is going to have a good game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? A, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense is struggling. Tom Brady does not look good. Mike Evans looks kind of beat up or washed or injured or something. This offense is really not hitting on any cylinders in Tampa Bay, as I mentioned earlier in the video. Bad play calling decisions. I, I get it. This is in Tampa Bay, but a big, big item here is this Tampa Bay offensive line is already super injured. We already know that. And now they lose their, lose their tackle to some warps, guys. That is a major blow this New Orleans Saints team is very, very, very good at getting after the quarterback and creating sacks. Granted, they're coming off their worst performance. It's the only one sack performance this week against San Francisco 49ers. But before that, this was a four, five, six sack a game defense. Guys, they don't create a ton of turnovers, but they do get very solid quarterback pressure and sacks. And you know the Saints are very good against Tom Brady, very good against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They have a really high win percentage against these guys. They know how to get Tom Brady out of his head. And this is not just when John Payton was there. The Saints team has had their number for a while. I think this is a sneaky start here. They're going to be widely available in your leagues, I believe. Not a whole lot of teams are going to be trying to start against Tom Brady. But I'm saying you can go ahead and do this, guys. I think this is one of those options that's going to give you a safe return, guys, going up against the Tampa Buccaneers. We're going to start shifting into more of the matchup based options here, guys. So up next, I'm talking about the Cleveland Browns, who are literally like one of the worst defenses in all of the league, guys. But they have been getting healthier. And the one thing they do really, really well is get after the quarterback, guys, with Miles Garrett now fully back. Uh, Jadavion Clowney, uh, this pass rush is looking hungry, guys. Just had three sacks against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They had a lot of pressures against Tom Brady. They looked very, very good, guys. Uh, and now they get to go up against the Houston Texans who just gave up an amazing game to the Miami Dolphins defense, who isn't that good either, guys. But the Miami Dolphins were flying around. They got a lot of sacks against the Houston Texans. They obviously got a lot of turnovers and had a touchdown. I don't expect any sort of big-time performance like that with the Cleveland Browns this week, but I think they're going to have a good game. I think they're going to be one of the better streaming options because of this beautiful matchup, and they're under 10% roster. The Houston Texans are really looking at this season as a done deal, which they probably should, guys. But they are packing it in. Damian Pierce, guys like that, that they are invested in, they are going to give the ball less to. They are going to have on the field less. They are not trying to get these guys banked up because they're long-term invested. And these guys are just kind of done with it. Now, Allen to replace Davis Mills is absolutely terrible at the quarterback position in my mind, guys. I think the Texans are one of those teams, again, that we are just going to really start streaming against. In the beginning part of the season, I was streaming against them, but they were still pretty solid. But now, man, I think they have passed the point of no return, guys. So I think you can put the Browns in here. Let Miles Garrett go eat against the Houston Texans. And I think he can have some confidence in the Cleveland Browns. Up next, we're talking about a defense that just got absolutely lit up last week, guys, which was really kind of surprising because before that, they had been pretty solid on the year. Talking about the Seattle Seahawks, who just got run on, passed on, scored on at will. Guys gave up 40 points. It was a little bit surprising, too, because the Seahawks team had been very, very solid all year long, guys. They had given up two interceptions. This was a very uncharacteristic game in my mind about the Seattle Seahawks because Geno Smith was turning the ball over, too. This offense didn't look very good at times. Um, but then the Raiders just came out there. They passed the ball very quickly, got the ball out of their hands very quick just like Tom Brady did in week 10, right before the bye week, guys. This week, going up against the Los Angeles Rams, different story, right? In the past couple of weeks, Seattle Seahawks defense, pass rush has not been getting to the quarterback. This week, they're going up against the worst offensive line in football, guys. Going up against Bryce Perkins, who was terrible. against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs had two turnovers on the guy. They were able to get to him. I understand that he's a little bit mobile, but I think the Seahawks are going to create some serious problems. 
for the Los Angeles Rams, which are one of the worst teams in football in my mind, it's just as bad as the Denver Broncos. I would never want to see the Rams and the Broncos plays. That would be one of the grossest games I've ever seen, guys. But the Seattle Seahawks team, I think they are very, very good at getting turnovers. And they can get back to that pass rush, which we saw all season long, guys, where they were getting five and six sacks a game. I just think they need to go up against a team like this against the Rams, where that offensive line is super beat up, guys. And then next week, they've got the Carolina Panthers, right? So if they can get back into good graces against the Rams here uh, and they have a good game, I think they're going to have another good game next week against the Carolina Panthers. Last defense I'm going to talk about, guys, and do not sign off when I say their names, guys. I know it sounds scary, but it's really not if you go back and look at the stats. I'm talking about the Detroit Lions, the Dan Campbell coached up Detroit Lions. You're right, I am. Guys, Detroit Lions, let me just bring you back through their last month. Against the Buffalo Bills, they had one pick, three sacks. They were flying around. They created a turnover that I saw. They had a fumble that got called back. I didn't really think that was their accurate call either. So I think they could have had an even bigger game against the Buffalo Bills. And then before that, they had 12, 11, 13. Guys, they have been having two to three interception games. They're turning the ball over like crazy against the opponents, guys. They are getting after the quarterback. Aiden Hutchinson has got these guys flying around on the defensive line, guys. They're creating turnovers, like I've said, guys. This defense for the Detroit Lions has had a completely different past month than they have all season, than they have over the last decade, right? Probably, guys. This different Detroit Lions team is definitely playing better. Uh, they are still giving up points, guys. They're still doing things like that, but they are playing an aggressive minded defense where they are going after the ball getting turnovers guys and that's exactly what you want for fantasy going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars here I mean Travis Etienne is done with now with a foot injury more than likely and then Trevor Lawrence coming in here he's very good at home games he plays better at home but when he's away we can see him get kind of into some bad rhythms let the crowd kind of take him out of the game uh we have seen him kind of make turnover plays we have seen him let the pass rush get to him uh, I think this is another good opportunity for that with the Lions so Guys, this team, obviously very low rostered. So if you were in deeper league options, I would not shy away from this unit with the Detroit Lions. And if you don't believe me, just go look at the numbers. Be a numbers guy or gal and go look at what they have done over the last month because it has been truly surprising and truly impressive, guys. They are under 3% rostered, guys. And they just had a pretty good game against the Buffalo Bills if you went out and watched that game on Thanksgiving Day. So give them a chance against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And with all that said, guys, this has been the must-start defenses for your fantasy football teams going into week 13. Like I said at the top, guys, it's a little bit of a harder week for streaming options. So please do give me the comments below so we can talk it out and figure out the best option for your team this week, guys. And if you are not already a part of the Catch Fam, certainly encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Join the best community in all of fantasy football. And if you like this video or any of the other videos that we put out there, Always appreciate a good old like button and that as that means a ton to the channel. But with all that said, this has been the muster of defenses for your fantasy football teams going into week 13. And you saw it here first at the catch.